So <coughs> this yeah. is an algorithm, right? Um, it's autonomous and it does what it was built for. We are TAI, Tudor, Andrei, and Irina, and we just like algorithms. Um, when you put together an algorithm with the processing power of a computer, you get what is called generative design. And um, what generative design uh, allows you to do is to sort of uh, create your own builder that is able to tweak the outcome in order to fulfill uh, whatever needs are necessary. And um, for example, instead of just designing a chair uh, to whatever you think best fits your needs, you rather uh, implement uh, all the relations between the different components that uh, build a chair, uh, not into a cute robot like this one, but rather into an algorithm that can be understood by a specialized software and uh, that can output uh, various uh, uh, amounts of uh, products, let's say, uh, that are different but are based on the same logic. And um, this kind of uh, an approach uh, was uh, unaccessible just a few years back, and uh, that's why we think it's very valuable. Um, and we think we should be embraced. And uh, we are actually witnessing today a leap into a new design paradigm. And since this is the case, we thought we should uh, share our knowledge with uh, whoever is interested. And we made a series of workshops regarding generative design and people came, it was nice, and we will just talk about briefly <laughs> about the three of them today. So these are the three. Okay, so as Andre said, uh, we wanted to push uh, things a step further. Uh, the era of uh, I share mine, if you share yours, uh, should be over, and we should be able to uh, share our ideas without expecting much in return. So what we want sorry, is uh, mass collaboration, because uh, we think uh, mass collaboration pushes things forward. Um, last year we had our first event uh, where we had uh, around uh, 60 people participating. It was the first event, one of the first events uh, from our series and one of the first events of this type in Bucharest. And uh, the goals that uh, the participants had set for themselves were, were generally just to have a basic idea about uh, generative tools. The um, goals we had set for them was uh, for them to get to work together, for them to uh, understand the basic principles and the logic behind generative design, and of course, digital fabrication methods. We wanted to inflict them with the urge to experiment because we believe that experimentation is um, really driving things forward. And in architecture and in design, uh, we believe uh, they cannot evolve without uh, experimentation. We pushed them from the very beginning to form groups uh, because we think that the fastest way to learn something new is by collaborating. So um, discussing new ideas and uh, splitting tasks such as creating virtual models and uh, physical ones helps you identify problems from a, in an earlier design stage. Um, and learning from each other is extremely crucial and we believe from an educational point of view uh, it should be implemented in any field. We basically gave them just a starter kit of uh, software knowledge and then ask them to play, and we believe that they really did uh, an amazing job. They really created some really interesting uh, structures. And uh, after the four days of the workshop, uh, we had to choose from the 10 uh, interesting ideas. Three of them had to be built. Um, we think that getting to choose uh, makes you understand the underlying principles of the design. So uh, you are understanding what's happening there. So we think that choosing is also an important part of the process. This is a video which is so showing the uh, building process of this uh, small pavilion. 
And uh, you could see at the beginning how the students formed an assembly line, uh, one which was going on uh, in the uh, classroom, and the other one which is going on on site, let's say. Um, and it was quite interesting to see this happening by itself. The first place where, where we uh, exhibited was the University of Architecture. This is in the hallway of our uh, university. Of the university. Yes, the next thing and the final thing I want to talk about is uh, awareness. I believe um, awareness uh, or wanting to, to get people to know something is, is something which comes with a package of uh, being an, an architect or a designer. Uh, to raise awareness and to make people think about what's going on uh, in their environment is extremely interesting and uh, uh, it's one of the most important tasks of innovative design methods. At the street delivery we had the opportunity to uh, actually see what people uh, or, or hear what people think about these structures and um, although it might look kind of strange uh, to many of us um, it has common uh, components which can be recognized so uh, it had a, a wide array of uh, reactions but one thing we know is that it didn't go unnoticed It was used as, a, as many things, actually, during this exhibition. It was used as a protective shell against uh, rain or sun. It was used uh, as a playground uh, or as a nursery. And, uh, uh, but we know that the kids loved it, and this was uh, great to know. Uh, so we decided to uh, give it away to a kindergarten after this uh, exhibition. And through a friend of ours and a collaborator, Alexander Kalachov, uh, we managed to um, get it rebuilt by simply sending the production files in Russia, in Krasnodar. And uh, this time it wasn't built uh, digitally, it was uh, actually cut by hand and assembled. And uh, we think this is also very nice that you can uh, share your designs and it can be, get built somewhere else. All right, so moving on. Um, each year, the um, architecture students in Yash, they build a pavilion with the, um, with the occasion of a local uh, architecture festival named Arca, and uh, this year they decided to, to try to, a generative approach. Um, the pavilion uh, was going to sit in uh, one of the largest plazas of, uh, of the city, so it would uh, work as an attraction as an attraction point for this festival, but as well as an icon for the, of, let's say, today's local uh, uh, architecture student community. And um, uh, generative design is a very versatile tool, so you can implement all sorts of attributes into it, and what we wanted to do is, uh, well, firstly, it, uh, let's say, shines the brightest when uh, it comes down to freeform shapes, so shapes that are irregular. So, therefore, we, we had two goals. One was to, to make something that, uh, that has a, quite a complex shape, and the other goal was, uh, since this pavilion was going to sit uh, for just a couple of weeks in that plaza, we wanted to make something that can be reconfigured in some other shape uh, to fill other spaces. So, for example, the front lawn of the architecture uh, faculty in Yash. And um, therefore, we used a repetitive module so it can be reconfigured. And um, this module uh, allows, uh, allows it to, to, let's say, link or connect to, to its neighbors in a, an array of possible heights. And therefore, it can describe all sorts of uh, freeform shapes. And um, during uh, the process of designing, we also visited the, um, uh, the fabrication laboratory where these pieces would be built. So we, so we, um, it's, it's very uh, important to, to be familiarized with the um, fabrication process when uh, dealing with designs like this because uh, 
you want to really minimize the, the chances of something wrong coming up in the assembly. And um, uh, speaking about the assembly, uh, it was uh, quite a large structure. It was 10 uh, meters wide, and therefore we made a separate workshop just for it. And um, um, well, a lot of uh, on-the-spot de decision making and uh, try and error approaches needed to be done. But in the end, we did manage to to make this, let's say, temporary architecture temple. And um, well, it looks something like this. Well, this is the process. A lot of hard work, but uh, it was built in just a few days. Um, and uh, it looks something like this. And what I can say is that it uh, did draw a lot of attention from uh, the local um, architecture students to teachers to students of the nearby faculties or just uh, people passing by. There. Okay. So we have spoken about mass collaboration. We have spoken about the technical part. Now we also have another question. How do we interact with the community? What about the community? What's the impact we have on the community? Um, in order to answer this question, we relate it to a site in our own country, in Timisoara. It's a pretty active site. Uh, it's located in the historical center. One of the challenges we chose was to actually implement a digital design into a historical place. Um, in order to do that, uh, we gathered together a small crowd of really eager students, and we told them to implement their solutions and their experiments on this site. We were pretty interested on how they would do that. So we did a workshop. We organized a workshop there. The goal of the workshop was to um, make the participants familiar with interdisciplinary collaborations and the merging of different creative fields. In this case here, you can see a, an uh, organic uh, relaxed surface, which re resembles, um, uh, which was made with uh, physical simulation tools. Here, we also introduced another concept, the DIY. I think you're quite familiar with this concept. DIY means do it yourself. Um, in this case here, you have a 3D printer. It's a free printer you can build on your own. It brings uh, 3D printing into your own home in order for you to produce uh, plastic objects. So you basically have endless possibilities of creation. This is what we did in our case with this technology. We made small mock-ups with, the, the, with a few solutions the participants came up with. The, these are the first mock-ups of the event of the future installations we built at a one-to-one -one scale. So another, um, another challenge was to build one-to-one -one scale projects. In this case, you actually have to tackle with actual physical forces. You have to find uh, solutions for uh, complex geometries to stand on their own. We made mock-ups. We made uh, 3D milled, uh, CNC milled components. This is the assembly line. We built it on site. We had some problems we had to tackle with that. Uh, how we, are we going to put this together? How are we going to rise it up? In the end, this is how it looked. This is one of the solutions. We covered the whole courtyard with this installation. The components uh, were uh, distinct and custom made. You see in this particular picture, that rope there, well, we had to tackle with physical, with, we had to tackle with physical forces, but we couldn't actually uh, take them all in account. So we, we um, interfered, we had problems. We had to come up with solutions on site. And one of the conclusions is that um, an, a generative design tool doesn't offer you solutions always. It has a human input. So you get to program it. You, you get to make it uh, do what you want. 
So the architect or the designer has a very important input in it. You don't have solutions came out, coming out from a digital design cookbook. Um, these are other examples. And as uh, in the end, we hope that we brought, uh, we made the participants familiar with, um, with the, uh, the design process, and uh, we, are in we are also encouraging uh, the phenomena on a global level. We have been participating in uh, communities, and we, by seeing others participating as well, we want to believe that this domain will evolve. So to sum it all up, <clears throat> there are basically two ways of designing things. Let's say the traditional way and the generative way. And the generative design allows you to interact with the process by implementing uh, logical uh, steps, which get processed by a computer, of course. Uh, and this allows you to have an integrated design uh, with, infinite, with an infinite amount of uh, results. Um, these results, or this, uh, actually this method, uh, has led up to now to numerous uh, advancements, also in technology and so on. And we think uh, it's going to enhance the, enhance the way we live. So, thank you. Thank you.